Hey everyone, Dr. Clark here. I'm going to explain why there is a huge link between Hashimoto's and vitamin D deficiency. Um, vitamin D is a critical regulator of your immune system, and research has already established that vitamin D deficiency is highly associated with other autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes, and it is very much associated with Hashimoto's uh, thyroiditis. Now, what is Hashimoto's? Well, it's an autoimmune attack on your thyroid gland. What does it cause? It causes lots of different low thyroid symptoms like constipation, hair loss, brain fog, um, a need to sleep excessively in order to function, high cholesterol, infertility, uh, joint pain. There's a whole bunch of things that Hashimoto's can lead to. Now, the reason I'm telling you about vitamin D today is you might have seen in the news lots of information about vitamin D, but last year there was a great study that came out that looked specifically at Hashimoto's patients. And I want to share these statistics with you. The study defined vitamin D deficiency as less than 30 nanograms per deciliter. Very simple. What they did is they took 161 confirmed Hashimoto's patients, meaning these people had positive TPO antibodies and or positive TGB antibodies. That's how you test for it. And they just measured their vitamin D levels. Here's what they found. This is fantastic. 92% of the Hashimoto's patients had vitamin D deficiency. So 148 out of the 161 had vitamin D deficiency. Crazy, right? Now it gets better. They even broke it down into looking at overt hypothyroidism subclinical hypothyroidism, and euthyroid. Okay, so let me explain what those means. Overt hypothyroidism means they've got the antibodies and their TSH is elevated and they've got symptoms. Okay, um, subclinical means that they have positive antibodies, their TSH is elevated, but they don't have any symptoms yet. Okay, that's what they mean by subclinical. Now, in the third group, euthyroid means they've got positive antibodies, but their thyroid numbers are quote-unquote normal. Now, here's how they broke it down. This is great. In the overt hypothyroid category, right, the people that got positive antibodies, their TSH is goofy, 94% of them had vitamin D deficiency. In the second group, the subclinical people, meaning the people that really didn't have symptoms, but their numbers were a little bit goofy, and they had the antibodies, it was 98% of those people had vitamin D deficiency. Out of the third group, which is the euthyroid, that's EU thyroid, euthyroid, uh, that group, 86% of them had vitamin D deficiency. So here's what you know. Now, the researchers say that, that that's not statistically significant in the euthyroid group, but I'm telling you, it is significant. All of those Hashimoto's patients, look how many of those people had vitamin D deficiency. Huge. Huge. So we know for sure that vitamin D has something to do with Hashimoto's. Now, exactly what does it do? Well, I'm going to give you the, the short course in it. Vitamin D is a critical regulator of your immune system. Without vitamin D, your immune system can become hyper-exuberant or it can become unbalanced very easily. And when it becomes unbalanced, it can lead to an expression of an autoimmune attack on a tissue. So, for example, in Hashimoto's, if you carry the gene for Hashimoto's and you become vitamin D deficient, your gene can turn on and you can start expressing it and start attacking your thyroid. Over time, you become low thyroid, you develop those symptoms, and then you go see somebody who probably doesn't test you to see if you got Hashimoto's. They just put you on Synthroid or uh, Armor or one of those things, and over time, you really don't feel better. Um, and that's unfortunately usually what happens. But vitamin D, does that mean that you should just go out and buy some and start supplementing? No, it doesn't, because even though vitamin D is relatively harmless, you don't know how much you need. And plus, there's a, another little situation where if you take the wrong dosage of vitamin D, listen carefully, if you take the wrong dosage of vitamin D, you can actually make yourself worse. And that involves something called 1,25-dihydroxyvitamin D, which is a little bit beyond what I want to explain here, but the takeaway message is I've had some Hashimoto's patients take vitamin D and feel bad. And that's because they were trying to do it on their own and they didn't really have everything they needed uh, They needed to make a, a good decision. So even though Hashimoto's and vitamin D deficiency are almost the same thing, that doesn't mean you should go out and start supplementing vitamin D. You need to find someone who understands exactly what I've been telling you about. Someone who understands that there's other things to look at um, and that vitamin D, even though it's important, is not going to be the alpha and omega. Now, clinically, in my practice, we see a lot of people that need vitamin D, but some people need this much, some people need you know, this much. Some people can't take it at all, even though they look like they need it. So don't take this information and do some self-treatment. Find someone that knows 
uh, what to do. But the takeaway is vitamin D deficient Hashimoto's, uh, almost the same thing.